You may be seated. The scripture lesson for this morning has changed a little bit since the bulletin was printed. So it will be John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3 and 14. Hear now the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the one who is called the Word. The Word was with God and was truly God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. And with this Word, God created all things. Nothing was made without the Word. The Word became a human being and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him, the complete gifts of undeserved grace and truth have come down to us. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as you all know, Christmas Day was Monday, where we celebrated the birth of Jesus, the Christ child. Now, I remember giving birth to my children and in the hospital being handed those tiny human beings and just marveling at them, the, the little fingers and toes, the little tiny toenails and fingernails. I mean... I just kept thinking to myself, what a miracle. How awesome is God that we can have little tiny human beings like that? And I realized just how blessed I was. Now, I'm sure it was similar for Mary and Joseph when Jesus was born. They experienced these very normal feelings about the miracle of birth. But they also had additional feelings because of the angelic visits they had received. These visits proclaimed that this particular baby was even more miraculous than others because he was the son of God, fully human and fully divine. The word made human. With the birth of Jesus the Christ, we learned that God loves us and came to live as one of us so that we might know God and be connected with God in a new and intimate way. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Thus, Jesus reveals God with perfect clarity so, we'll, so that we will know what God cares about and what God is like. What we see through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ is that God loves us unconditionally and wants us to love like God does. This, my friends, is the promise of Christmas, that God loves us and was willing to live a life like ours with all of its frailties and problems and limitations to be with us and show us how to love. However, most people in Jesus' time did not recognize him as the Son of God or think that he was particularly holy or special. Even his siblings didn't believe that he was the Son of God until after the resurrection. Instead of noticing Jesus' uniqueness and seeing it as a miracle and full of the holy, the people around him saw him as someone who was different and who posed a threat to them and their way of life. They rejected him because he showed that God loves everybody, not just a select few. And because he didn't stay within the boundaries that society had set. So Jesus lived for over 30 years before being arrested and executed. And his resurrection, it was only till his resurrection and ascension that the people around him knew that in fact he was 
the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. The thing is, even though Jesus is no longer physically present with us, God is still here, living among us. The promise of Emmanuel has not gone away. Because before Jesus was arrested, he promised his disciples that God would send another one, an advocate, to be with us always. That advocate is the Holy Spirit. And the presence of the Holy Spirit means that God is with us all the time, even right here, right now. God is here among us, giving us glimpses of the divine. If only we have the eyes to see them and recognize God and God's actions. Just like with Jesus, it can be easy to overlook the divine within people around us because they don't live up to our expectations or are different than we are. We need to have our eyes opened to the holy all around us. Now, I think the way to see the holy more readily is to be open to awe and wonder, like I was when my children were born. A few weeks ago, I read a series of devotions from the Center for Action and Contemplation these devotions pointed out that being open to awe and wonder enables us to more readily experience the holy and the miraculous. For me, Christmas is a time when it's easier to be filled with awe and to experience the holy. The music of Christmas, especially the lovely music like Maria just sang and our choir, the sing-along Messiah, all of those help me feel God's presence. Now, I hope all of you were here for our Christmas Eve service, but it was beautiful and meaningful. We had a play with one, we had a play, we had wonderful music, wonderful message, beautiful lights and decorations. But it was particularly for me during the hymns that we sang that I kept getting what I call Holy Spirit bumps. Those are goosebumps that I get when I can feel God's presence in a palpable way. Moments like these when we open ourselves to awe and wonder, when we open our hearts to experience the divine, make it easier to know that God is with us. The thing is, my friends, God is with us always. Like I said, the holy is all around us, whether we notice or not. Jesus promised that, and a lot of people can attest to the veracity of that promise. I think we can cultivate our awareness of God by being open to awe and wonder. We can more easily see the divine and those around us if we look at them the way Jesus did. Jesus saw all people as beloved children of God who have value and are precious. People who were important even if they were poor, sick, or of seemingly no value. My point is, it's not just newborn infants who are miracles that give us a glimpse of God. Everyone we see, including ourselves, is just like that. All we need to do is notice. So how many of you look in the mirror each morning and think to yourself with awe and wonder, wow, I'm a miracle of God? I know, I don't do it either. <laughs> But think about it. We have the same bodies that newborns do, just bigger. Our bodies do miraculous things all the time, just by breathing and pumping blood. We just don't marvel at them the way we do with small children. Think how we ooh and ah at a baby when they take their first steps. 
or when that small child finally learns to pick up a Cheerio and put it in their mouths. I mean, that's cause for celebration. But we do that. You actually can get some Cheerios on the spoon, I bet, and get it in your mouth. So why aren't we just as amazed at what our adult bodies can do? Think about the huge miracle it is to be able to walk and talk, to translate our thoughts into actions or our, our ideas into words or pictures on a page. It's incredible. But even if we can't do those things, we are still incredible miracles of God because God created us and God loves us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made even when these bodies don't work like we would want them to. So think how different the world would be if we saw each person as a divine miracle. Instead of looking at the flaws and insufficiencies of ourselves or the people around us, let's start seeing everybody as miraculous and endowed with gifts that we can appreciate. For example, I have a friend who years ago was in the praise team at her church, which is like a choir, but with guitars. Um, so, but, so one Sunday, she saw a, a guy come in late and he was a biker guy, all in leather, tattoos, the whole thing. And she, she sort of watched him. And she's like thinking, you know, I don't know why he's here. Um, but he looked very different than everybody else. But he worshipped just like everybody around him. And she noticed that week after week, he came back. So she decided to get to know him after a time. And she what she discovered was that he was a wonderful man who loved God and loved the people around him, and he had many wonderful gifts. Over time, he joined that church. And even over a little bit longer time, as they got to know each other, they fell in love and ended up getting married. But before she could recognize his gifts and the miraculous person that he was, she had to get past her preconceptions about him. Friends, we all tend to form opinions about others based on looks or actions. We have an innate desire not to associate people who are different from us. I think being filled with wonder and looking for the holy in others is a good way to overcome our preconceptions and our biases. When we see each other as miracles, we see the possibility and promise in ourselves and others. If we always looked with awe and wonder at the people around us, we would find it easier to believe that God loves Palestinians and Israelis, that God loves Jewish Jews and Christians and Muslims and Hindus and agnostics and atheists. When we look with love on everyone and act with love toward them, we deck our halls with the promise of Jesus Christ. By living a life of love, we will follow in the way of Jesus and love not just God, but all people. Friends, when we, are really, when we really open ourselves to God's incredible, unending, unfathomable love for us, we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Then we will be able to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we will be able to love other people as we love ourselves. We will see each and every person as a walking miracle of immeasurable value who is just as worthy of love, peace, and justice 
as we are. We won't need to prioritize money or power or position. We will understand that love is more powerful than all of those and that people are far more important than any of those things. When we let God work in us so that we love like Jesus did, the world will begin to resemble God's beloved community. And that's what we all want. Thanks be to God.